You have been planning your trip to the Outer Banks for months. You are looking forward to finally enjoying the sun, surf, and sand. But when you arrive, the weather has other plans. It just so happens that the prime tourist season of June, July, August, and September are also the months that see the most rain in the Outer Banks, averaging around five inches or more each of these months. So what can you do in the Outer Banks when it rains? We will spend the first half of this video telling you about our favorite place to visit if it rains. Then in the second half, we will share other options with you as well. Of course, any of these could also be enjoyed in good weather if you can pull yourself away from the beach. Some even have outdoor sections to enjoy when the weather is nice. So starting with our favorite, we love visiting the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island in the city of Manio. This is one of four North Carolina aquariums. You enter this grand entranceway with sea creature replicas hanging above you from the ceiling. One of the first things you see as you enter is Neptune's Theater. When we walked in, they were showing episodes of Wild Kratts, a kid's biology and zoology education cartoon. They also air some ocean documentaries at various points in the day. The first display area is called Seven Rivers, which features snakes and amphibians of the nearby river system. This aquarium has really good theming throughout. Both kids and adults will love it. This themed area is called Wild Wetlands and featured gators along with some very adorable sea turtles. There is also a classroom space where students on field trips can meet with staff and they have a summer camp going on currently. The Sea Turtle Assistance and Rehabilitation Center was also fascinating. A staff member explained why each turtle had been rescued and how they were being nursed back to health. This area exits into a hands-on exhibit where you can play the role of aquarium scientist working with rescued turtles. You start by picking up a plastic turtle and heading to a simulator station where an x-ray and other tests will be completed to get a diagnosis. And then, based on that information, you move to a treatment station where you might need to administer a shot or perform other treatments or tests. Once your turtle is healed, you return it back to the sea. This was a really fun and educational interactive area. Of course, at an aquarium, you expect to see a lot of fish or other sea life, and this one doesn't disappoint. There are small fish, seahorses, large sharks, lobsters, and more. There are also two touch tanks where you can pet stingrays. We were lucky enough to be walking through when they were being fed. There were some other animals in touch tanks too, including hermit crabs and starfish. There are also several tanks of different kinds of jellyfish. These were beautiful, but it's better to see them here than out on the beach. One of my favorite aspects of this aquarium were the interactive digital displays that were at many exhibits. They let you swipe to identify which type of fish you were seeing and then tap to learn more about them, things like where they live and what they eat. I know people who aren't into reading all the signage at museums will probably skip over this, but I loved this additional touch of technology. There's also a large underwater display of a shipwreck. 
because the waters around the Outer Banks are known as the graveyard of the Atlantic. The shifting sands change the depths of the water, and ships can easily run aground. This area also included a huge glass viewing area where you can watch the various species of sharks and other fish. Of course, no attraction is complete without a gift shop, and the aquarium has one as well. If you happen to visit on a day where the sun is shining, the aquarium also features an outdoor area to explore. There's a nice pier, as well as a walk-through educational and activity area where your family can learn about various birds, bird sounds, bird nests, plants, and insects. Since reopening after their COVID closure, the aquarium has been making people get advance reservation tickets with a specific date and time of entry. Tickets are $12.95 for adults and $10.95 for kids. We were able to get same day reservations on our recent trip, but that was in May before the summer crowds began in full. While this is our favorite rainy day activity, this is also a very popular attraction. So we suggest checking the forecast a few days in advance and buying tickets on days where it looks like rain could be expected. If you wait, you may not be able to get in if tickets are sold out, which does occasionally happen. So what else can you do if you can't get in the aquarium on a rainy day? Another enjoyable way to spend a day inside is to visit some local museums. We love visiting the Graveyard of the Atlantic Museum, and it's free. Their donations are encouraged. This place tells the story of well-known shipwrecks in the area. There have been over 2,000 of them documented over the years. The museum also covers the fishing, scuba, and even pirate history of the Outer Banks. We also enjoyed the Frisco Native American Museum. This somewhat small museum was opened by two former educators to preserve Native American culture, and they've succeeded at that, as there are thousands of artifacts from Native cultures, both local and across the country, included in these exhibits. If you happen to go to this museum when it isn't raining, it has several acres of nature trails with some exhibits to explore outdoors as well. Tickets to the Native American Museum are $5 per person. Another rainy day activity is to tour the Whalehead Club in Kerala. This property features a beautifully restored 1920s era Art Nouveau style mansion turned museum that is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It was first opened as a lavish hunting retreat in 1925, and today the inside is open to the public for tours, and the home has been restored to its original glory. When we visited, photography was not allowed inside. Several rooms, though, do feature audio stations where you can listen to the history and details about the room. Prices and tour options vary, so check the website for the latest information. Another rainy day activity that I enjoy is shopping. The Outer Banks is home to many stores, including Outlets Nags Head. Whether you are looking for clothes, sweets, water and sports equipment, shoes or kitchenware, there is a store here for you.
They also have a couple outdoor seating areas with beautiful views in case you need to rest in between finding your good deals. I, of course, found plenty of merchandise to buy here. It seems rainy days at the beach may not be good for one's wallet. There are also a wide range of candy and treat shops at the Outer Banks. You can find almost any type of candy you can think of. And of course there are numerous souvenir stores like Super Wings that are usually available at popular beach destinations. If you know you're going to want some souvenirs anyway, a rainy afternoon in the Outer Banks may be a good time to do the shopping. There's also a huge Christmas store in Manio. Christmas is my favorite holiday, and in this store it is Christmas all the time. You can stock up on decorations or just window shop and enjoy the sights and sounds of Christmas. Depending on the season, it may have some other decorations as well. Last time we were there they had an entire room dedicated to Halloween decorations. We've seen a couple smaller Christmas stores in the Outer Banks too. There are also several art galleries in the area. We visited Sea Green Gallery, where art is made from objects that are being repurposed. This is one of about a dozen art galleries that we know of in the Outer Banks, and there could be more that we just aren't aware of yet. Sea Green Gallery is our favorite of the ones we have seen. They had some great pieces here, everything from jewelry and pottery to outdoor decorations. Like some of our other destinations, there is an outdoor gallery in the back that you could check out if you happen to stop by in good weather. Another fun way to entertain the family on a rainy day is by visiting an arcade. We've seen several of these in the Outer Banks. We visited Destination Fun, which featured arcade games, laser tag, and bumper cars. I had a lot of fun beating, I mean, playing Jack at skee-ball and air hockey, two of our favorites. He did win this game of bashing in clown heads, so I feel safe with him should a clown ever try to attack me. We wanted to play laser tag, but they required parties of at least four, and there were no other people ready to play when we were interested. However, it shouldn't be hard to find a group to play with on rainy summer days. In addition to several arcades, there are also a couple of different escape rooms on the Outer Banks as well, but we haven't tried those yet. Though we have done escape rooms a couple other places and have always enjoyed them. The Outer Banks also has a movie theater and a couple bowling alleys, which are both great rainy day activities. You can always pack some games or buy some during your trip and stay in your house or hotel for a day of competition with the family. We're a family that loves games, and we often have game nights with friends, so that's something we usually enjoy at night, even if it isn't raining. And of course, one of our favorite things about vacation is not having to cook at the house. So there are plenty of wonderful restaurants to check out in the Outer Banks. If your cookout gets canceled because of a downpour, Check out some of the restaurants around your beach house or hotel room. You're very likely to find something you'll enjoy. So that's our list of things we like to do in the Outer Banks when it rains. It is important to note that it takes about three hours to drive from the northernmost part of the Outer Banks to the southern tip of Hatteras, and you can take a ferry to continue still further south to Ocracoke. So just because these destinations are all in the Outer Banks, that doesn't mean they will be close to where you are staying. You'll probably want to do a little research and map out some things that you'd like to see in the event that you wake up to rain one morning. That way you will already have a plan in mind and will have located the area of the OBX that you need to drive to. We have a whole playlist of fun attractions in the Outer Banks, including some that go into more detail about some of the places on our rainy day list. So be sure to check out those videos. I'm Alice. And I'm Jeff. Please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time. We're traveling through the Outer Banks.